students of 18th century France often refer to the encyclopedia of Diderot and d'Alembert in several ways. It is sometimes called the most important bestseller of the 18th century. It's sometimes seen as the machine de guerre or a blunt instrument with which Enlightenment philosophs uh, would bludgeon their opponents. And uh, it's also referred to at times as a compendium of all human knowledge in the middle of the 18th century. But behind these sound bites, what exactly was this book? Why was it controversial? And what was its history in the middle of the 18th century? Initially, Diderot and d'Alembert's encyclopedia was a business project. A publisher in Paris in the 1740s named André François Le Breton uh, gathered together three other publishing colleagues with the goal of translating a two-volume English encyclopedia that had been published in 1728 by Ephraim Chambers. By the time the work was finished in 1772, uh, its size had grown from eight volumes to 28, and the cost had risen from 280 livres to 980 livres. There were just over 4,000 copies of this first folio edition of the encyclopedia published, and one of those copies uh, was purchased by the MIT Rare Books and Special Collections uh, in 1951, and uh, that copy is at the heart of our exhibit in the Mayhagen Gallery. Le Breton and his publishing associates hired the promising young intellectual Denis Diderot to oversee the editorial tasks of the encyclopedia. Diderot quickly added uh, d'Alembert, a mathematician, and over the course of the next decade, many leading figures of the Enlightenment, including Voltaire and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, contributed to the encyclopedia. Now, today, encyclopedias and dictionaries are rarely controversial publishing events, but in the eight, middle of the 18th century, when the first first volumes of the encyclopedia began to appear, they generated all sorts of controversies. This was because of their emphasis on sensory perception and the use of human reason to understand individuals, society, and the natural world around them. These founding principles contradicted church dogma, which said that uh, revealed religion was the source of all authority, including political authority. France was a divine right monarchy, and the king ruled with the authorization of a Christian deity who instructed the king to tend over the Christian souls in his uh, Guard. In a thousand subtle ways, the articles of the encyclopedia undermined religious authority. For example, in an article on uh, Japanese customs and traditions, Diderot and his collaborators inserted a not so subtle critique of the Pope in Rome. In an article on pagan rituals, they made fun of the Eucharist and the Mass. Uh, these uh, jibes at organized religion uh, led twice to the government shutting down the production of the encyclopedia. And in the end, Le Breton, Diderot's publisher himself, toned down some of the articles in the final ten volumes of the work without Diderot's knowledge. By the time the final volume of plates appeared in 1772, many of the original collaborators had either passed away or uh, gone on to other projects. D'Alembert himself, as a result of a controversy around an article he wrote on Geneva in the late 1750s, withdrew from active participation in the editing of the project. In 1772, Diderot, wary of his labors over 25 years, despaired that the encyclopedia he had produced was incomplete. Many of its articles did not reflect the current state of knowledge or had been produced too quickly under publication deadlines and with censorship pressures to satisfy him. Nevertheless, the publication of the encyclopedia marks an important moment in Western intellectual thought twice suspended by the government and attacked by clerics and other conservative critics. The book nevertheless provides a statement of enlightened principles uh, that reached a significant, highly receptive, and uh, commercially astute audience in the 18th century. And not coincidentally, it made a lot of money for Le Breton and his associates.